cities. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report. He's got new issues every Monday, updates throughout the week when warranted. That's right under the newsletter tab at TFNN. He's got a couple of outstanding webinars that you can check out on the services tab as well. We're coming into the holiday season. You might have a couple extra days. Maybe you're home just relaxing. Don't forget about those. Head on over to TFNN. You can check out those webinars right under the services tab. Teddy Kegstad, quite a market we got going on. Good morning. Absolutely. Where would you like to start? Oh, boy. Um, you want to start with yields? Uh, we talked a sure. little about the 10-year last week. We're under 3.9%, and it looks like it's not stopping anytime soon, man. What do you think of the market action? And, and yeah, let's start there if we could. Sure, sure. Well, I like the the right now where we're at right now as far as with the yields. You know, I think that, uh, you know, obviously yields are going to be a very big topic with what's going on with uh, England is, but also. So, um, but I think right now, you know, our numbers, like we've been talking about this, are even though they're tracking in the direction where they want it to be, you know, now they're talking about a soft landing and what have you. Um, remember that the, the original plan by the Fed was for us to have a recession. Even though we all Americans will say we've been in one, they said we have not been in one. So it's for us to have a soft landing. A soft landing isn't what they're looking for, for one. Uh, unemployment still, I think, is way too low for their original targets. They're looking, they want higher un unemployment, you know. So unless they're really going to shift their narrative and their strategy, which is what the original set out to do, their premise, um, I think that we're still on, we're in a holding pattern with them. I think we're hitting the extremes. Do I think yields can? go lower overall i think that's going to be the trend with the election year but i still think we still have a, a chance of getting them popped yet you know one more time you know like i think that you know the the news is trying to force the fed's arm and i'm sure that there's a lot of pressure from the government as well to like at least stop raising rates you know for the next like six to eight months at least or even more going into the election i would think you know so but the question is are they going to hold firm and i think we still have to watch the numbers you know um there's a lot of things that could cause inflation to come spiking back again you know so i mean what happens with i mean we this thing that's going on in yemen with crude you know we touched on this a couple weeks ago remember i when, a couple weeks ago i said you know did you hear about this you know these these ships that have been attacked and you know just yesterday alone you had five or six of the major shipping companies that go through that area say they are no longer going to go there at all i mean that's kind of a big deal i mean i don't know how many companies run major shipping out there, but I know that it, when it comes to that area of the world, it's not that many. So if they're not going to go there, what does that do to international trade? You know, you're going to see a lot of disruptions on a, on, a, on a commodity scale, especially. And that's going to affect the currency markets as well. Yeah, it was something like 14% of global maritime trade or something like that, which is just a remarkable number. Swings around mm -hmm. that corner. And yeah, it seems like, you know, it's a, it's a business, right? They're sending employees around there. And I think it probably reached the point, you know, being on those ships. Imagine, you know, they're mm -hmm. people, they got families, man, they're employees sure. at some point. It probably just reached that point, right? Where it's like, man, um, the company's probably even just from a liability perspective at some point, just too dangerous. And yeah, pretty remarkable. And we know geopolitical tensions, man, they can cause some headaches. And we got crude up to 75. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a headway um, segue to crude. I got crude up here. Sure. A little bit of a rise on some of that geopolitical risk but maybe just a little bit of a reprieve of the pullback we got what do you think accrued mm -hmm. at 75 dollars right now i you know what i actually from the tiger forex report i had you know crude going up into the 75 just over a 75 dollar mark for the upward correction you know off the lows that's a key area if this trend is going to remain the trend and hold the channel then we should see the market sell off from this area over the next couple of sessions or at least start to go sideways if we can sustain a trade above 75, that breaks the, the channel of the current downtrend, and that puts us into what could be a big range trade, you know, where we established a low. You know, I, I was saying already for weeks that I think that this lower, you know, it's about $70 is about as low as you're going to see in the oil market. I think you're going to see a big range trade, especially between 70 and 90 over the next probably four to five months as we get through the winter time. Nice. But things like this could spark spark something totally different, Oof. you know, because now how does that oil get to places like Israel? You know, then you have right. cost to carry that gets affected. Then you have inventory builds up, build ups, you know. So short run, could it be um, bearish oil? Absolutely. You know, um, I, I wouldn't be too quick to jump on a major bull bandwagon, um, but we don't know how these tensions are going to are going to rise. You know, Yemen's just one spot. If it keeps on growing, you know, historically revolutions, they spark. 
you know, like, and they go global. You know, it doesn't matter what period of history you're in. And right now we're in a major revolutionary period globally, and it seems that yes. fire, that spark is not going away. And, and I think that if that's the case, if history proves that's the way, that we're going to be in for a lot of this, a lot more of this kind of, um, you know, turmoil in the Middle East and around those areas. You know, most people don't think how that affects our trade, um, but it really does, you know, and it's going to yeah. affect yields, it's going to affect currencies, it's going to affect commodities, you know, which is good for us as traders. Um, but I like when we have, you know, trends that are established because of better reasons and more, you know, so. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. And then you, you throw know. in that, you know, those are Iran-backed rebels, right? So it's like we know, we've, you know, Iran gets in the mix, that causes some sure. possible escalations, sure. for sure. Sure, for sure. sure. Um, you so. want to talk a little bit about the UK and their inflation because we got the pound coming today that was out last night right and how that plays into things mm -hmm. um, looks like they got some lower numbers as well kind of jiving with what's going on here so far at least for the meantime okay yeah, and that plays into, you know, with the Tiger Forex report, I m mentioned how last week's high was kind of a critical um, area. So I have that as an upside breakout level to keep the, the trend going, which right now is more of a correction. You know, they've been rallying since October. We haven't had any really severe pullbacks, yeah. okay? But now we have a fundamental reason for the, for the trend to change because – Okay. The Bank of England is not going to be on a raising basis, obviously. Um, are they going to be quick to um, start cutting rates? Well, that's a whole other question. You know, are they going to be ahead of us? I would believe so. You know, so I think that the narrative alone is enough to kind of put us where right now you've probably seen a cap in the in the pound U.S. dollar. And I'm not trying to pick okay. a top from last week. However, I would say that, you know, um, the 125.95 area, 126 even area in the pound, that's a big directional area. So if we I think we could see a dip below that chop around that because we're heading into the holidays. So be cautious over the next week and a half, two weeks. You know, it could take until January, you know, for things to really start moving again. But I could yeah. see us get below that area and then probably get down to the 124 to 123 20 23 30 area you know nice. for a correction and that would be just a corrective move off of the current uptrend so, so that would be like a nice cool. technical sell-off area now if the trend changes fundamentally then that would be the area if we fall below that well look out below baby we're going to see a real big trend move down to the downside in the pound u.s dollar so and nice. that could see us down at the 120 level 118 area you know is, which i think is very very plausible you know and that's without us you know continuing continuing to raise rates either. This is just by us not doing anything, you know? Sure. So, you know, and I think that that's, uh, you, if there's going to be a market to trade, look for some big swings in the pound for sure over the next nice. uh, four or five months. The euro, I think it's going to be a little bit tighter of a trade though. So be cautious with that. Nice. Man, yeah, and that 118, that's where we're on March. So it's not bonkers. Pretty remarkable, the volatility in that pound dollar. Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. Have a great Christmas. Have a great you weekend. Too. Merry Christmas to all talk. you guys. Merry Christmas, man. We'll talk to you next week, okay? Thanks. Okay, have a great one. We'll be right back, folks.